Mistletoes are some seriously weird plants. Like seriously weird. In their biology, the traditions and customs associated with it, and even how it got its common name. Most of us know it best as the plant people kiss under at Christmas time. So how did this hemiparasitic plant become a symbol of fertility and love for ancient people and even today? Let's find out as we dive deep into the weird, wonderful, and mythical world of mistletoe. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm saving one of the weirdest facts about mistletoe for last. There are over 1,000 species of mistletoe spread across every continent except Antarctica, but for this video I will be talking about the American mistletoe, Foradendron leucarpum, and the traditions that started with the European mistletoe, Viscum album. First, a little background about how mistletoe lives and reproduces. Mistletoes are hemiparasitic plants, meaning they rely on a host plant for part of their nourishment. Host plants for American mistletoe can be a wide range of hardwoods, including oak, maple, ash, and walnut. Mistletoes have chlorophyll in their evergreen leaves and can photosynthesize to produce the sugar they need for energy and for producing starches and cellulose. Since they do not grow in the soil, but on and within the bark of a host tree, they must extract nutrients like water, phosphorus, and nitrogen from the host. They do this by piercing the bark with root-like structures called hostorium, which infiltrate the fluid transport tissues of the host tree and allow the mistletoe to absorb nourishment, kind of like a little green vampire. If you love learning about wildly weird plants, be like the mistletoe and suck the nutrients out of that like button. The fact that mistletoe has evergreen leaves may be part of the reason that ancient Greeks, Romans, and Druids considered mistletoe a symbol of fertility, because it stays green while the tree it lives upon loses its leaves in the winter. This might have been the reason that ancient Greeks used mistletoe in wedding ceremonies, although exactly how is unclear. The Romans adopted mistletoe as a sign of fertility and used it in the Saturnalia festival, which occurred during the winter solstice and honored the god of agriculture, Saturn. Mistletoe was worn as head wreaths and hung over doorways to ward off evil spirits and to ensure peace during Saturnalia. Fun fact! There is a critter that relies on those evergreen leaves, the caterpillar of the great purple hair streak butterfly. Mistletoe is its only known host plant. This is a super cool, beautiful butterfly, and even if they were the only critter that benefited from mistletoe, I'd be sure to leave some of it in the trees for them. But there are several other critters that benefit from mistletoe. Mistletoes flower in the late fall to early spring, depending on species, and most form berries in the cold months. This winter flowering and fruiting may be a reason ancient cultures considered mistletoe a sign of fertility. The small, inconspicuous yellow flowers are used by pollinators that are active in the winter months, including native bees and honeybees. And mistletoe is an important source of nectar and pollen for them since little else is blooming at this time. Mistletoes are dioecious plants, meaning there are male and female plants, with only the female plants producing berries. The berries are white on the American and European mistletoe and are eaten by a wide range of songbirds, including the beloved bluebird. The berries contain a thick, sticky white substance which can cause the seeds to stick to a bird's bill and feet. They can then be transported to and deposited on other tree branches as the bird wipes its bill and feet to dislodge the seeds, forcing the seeds into nooks and crannies on the bark. There are some sources that say that ancient Greeks and Romans may have equated the sticky white fluid mistletoe berries contained with another fertility related sticky white fluid. I'll let you figure out what that could be on your own. Of course, this just helped to solidify the belief that mistletoe is a symbol and enhancer of fertility. Mistletoe has been used as a medicinal plant for centuries and has been used to treat a wide range of ailments, even though it is toxic. Due to its symbolic ties to fertility, it was often, and still is by some people, used to treat menstrual issues and infertility. Studies have shown it to be a uterine stimulator, so there may be some truth to this age-old remedy. On the flip side, it has been documented to cause miscarriage in livestock and people due to these same uterine stimulating properties. When it comes to ingesting mistletoe for any reason, just don't. All mistletoes are toxic to some degree, not likely enough to kill you, but they can make you very ill. So how did we get from a sacred herb of ancient cultures to a modern day holiday tradition of kissing under the mistletoe? There are lots of theories, from it being based on Norse mythology to it coming from the Roman Saturnalia festival, and many things in between. From the research I did for this video, I think the best explanation is that our modern tradition is a combination of ancient Greek, Roman, and Druid customs that have been modernized to fit within our Christmas holiday. The hanging of mistletoe is common in all three of these cultures, whether to ward off evil spirits or as a symbol of love and peace. And it was often hung in a doorway, 
much like we do today. All three cultures also kissed under mistletoe for various reasons. The Roman festival of Saturnalia occurred during the winter solstice, which is in the same time of year as the Christmas season. Although many cultures have contributed to the tradition, Saturnalia seems like the most likely source for the bulk of our modern Christmas mistletoe tradition. If you love learning about the natural world in your backyard, here on Backyard Ecology, you can help support the channel by joining our Patreon. It is linked in the description, and thank you for your support. Earlier on, I mentioned mistletoe berries and how much birds like them. Not all the seeds get stuck to the outside of the bird. They do swallow quite a few. This is another way mistletoe seeds are spread and how this weird plant got its unusual name. Mistletoe can colonize new trees from birds defecating seeds onto a branch, which may have led to it being named mistletan in Middle English. Most sources attribute the meaning of mistle as dung and tan as twig. So the name literally translates to dung twig, which we now kiss under. Not a whole lot of romance there. Mistletoe wasn't the only evergreen plant to be revered and used in ancient festivals. The hollies with their evergreen leaves and bright red berries also possess special meaning. To learn about some awesome native hollies that will grow great in a pollinator garden, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.